Hello everybody. This is your first YouTube lesson. We're going to see how this works out for everybody here. Uh, this first lesson is going to be a review of slope. Uh, shouldn't take too long to go through and review these concepts. This is one of your first assignments uh, for this week. And so let's get to it. Uh, we're going to use this software here. I'm going to go ahead and turn on our display in the background. Now as I shrink my box here, you're going to see a lot of crazy feedback for a moment, so bear with me as we loop back through here. And then we're going to go over to our notes, which you should hopefully have. Uh, these notes have been uploaded. Uh, they are PDF, so you have them. You don't need to copy them down. In all honesty, you should have already taken this page of notes. Um, so what I want us to go back and review here for our slope is that slope is rate of change. Uh, when we first started talking about slope, uh, we talked about it here as it being rise over run. And we're going to talk about today about how we find the rise over run on a graph. Um, and then when we did it algebraically, it became change in y over change in x. And then when we had to find it using two points, we used the slope formula, which will be the second half of that lesson for today. Um, so let's go back to the rise and the run concept and finding the slope when we're on the graph. So if I go over here to this graph, we're going to have a couple of examples that we're going to use for rise over run. So I'm going to go ahead and put that at the top of the graph here just to remind us of what we're doing. We're going to do rise over run. Well, the first thing we need to do is we need to plot the two points. So for example, one, I have a point here at zero, zero. So I'm going to put that right here at the vertex. And then my second point is 3, 5. So that's 1, 2, 3, excuse me, 3, 4. And then up 4. 1, 2, 3, and 4. So 3 and 4. And then I'm going to draw a line between those two points. And I missed a little bit there. We're going to get better at this as we go. And now I'm going to find my rise and my run. Well, I want to start with the point on the left. And I got to then figure out how do I get to the point on the right. Well, I am going to, from that point on the left, I am going to rise 1, 2, 3, 4. And then I'm going to run 1, 2, 3. So I have a rise of 4 and a run of three. So when I look at this, my slope equals four over three. So my slope for that first one is four thirds. Okay. Now let's take a look at a second example here. We'll do this one in pink. Example two, the first point is at three comma five. So I'm gonna go over to three and then up to five. So this one's gonna be pretty close to this first one here. All right, so we're gonna go three comma five. I'm gonna put that point right there. The second one is negative four, negative nine. So I'm gonna go back four and down nine. So one, two, three, four, and down nine. You see, these are really far apart, so we're gonna to have to be careful when we count. All right, so let's go ahead now and draw a line between those two. Well, I'm going to go ahead now and I'm going to count from the point on the left and I'm going to rise. All the way up and then I'm going to run across. Well, this rise starts all the way down here at negative nine and goes up to five. So I'm going to count one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen. So my rise was fourteen. And then I'm going to run one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So my rise was up fourteen and then I had a run of seven. Well, let's go ahead and reduce 14 over 7, so the slope of this one is 2. Now, let's go ahead and take a look at examples 3 and 4. And I'm going to put those on a separate piece of graph paper. 
so they're not confusing with what you see in front of you. All right, so let's take that first example. You should have it in front of you. It's 4 comma 1 and 4 comma negative 3. So we're going to put that over here. And we'll plot this graph paper. And I'm going to put them up at the top again. 4 comma 1 and 4 comma negative 3. So I'm going to go over to 4 and up 1. There's my first point. And then to 4 and negative 3. There's my second point. And we're going to draw a line between those two there. And we have a vertical line. Now if you recall, the slope of a vertical line is always going to be undefined. So m equals undefined. All vertical lines will have a slope that's undefined. And then that final example that we had of rise over run was negative 3, comma 5, and negative 3, comma 2. So if we draw this one here, negative 3, comma 5, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, and negative 3, comma 2, 1, 2, what do we notice? And what did I just say about all vertical lines? M equals undefined. Well, let's take one final example. And we're not going to plot the two points, but let's just draw a horizontal line. If we think back to what we have memorized about horizontal lines, the slope of all horizontal lines are 0. Okay, So this is finding slope with rise over run. Well, if I come back to here, the other thing we said we would talk about is how do we find the slope if we have the slope formula? So we don't have the graph, but we have the slope formula. And remember, y2 and y1, x2 and x1 are the x and y values from the first point and the x and y values from the second point. So again, in your notes, we have another page where we have examples for how do we use the slope formula. So if I look at example number one, example number one, I have two points. Well, the first thing I need to do is I need to label my two points. So I'm going to label this one x1 and y1. That is the x value and the y value from the first point. And then I'm going to make this x2 and y2, which are the x and y values from the second point. I'm going to write the slope formula first. Every time you write it, it helps drill it into memory. So the slope formula is y2 minus y1, x2 minus x1. This next step is the most important part and the step where most people make mistakes. I have to make sure to plug the numbers in to the correct spots. Well, one of the things that I like to do is set up boxes because this helps me make sure that I keep track of what goes in each box. Well, this first box needs to be y2, and y2 is negative 9. So I'm going to put negative 9 in that first box. This second box here is going to be y1. I'm going to go up to my label up here. y1 is 5. So I'm going to put a 5 in there. Now the bottom are my x values, and this first one is going to be x squared, excuse me, x2, and x2 is right here, and that's negative 4. And then this final box is going to be x1, which is 3. Well, remember, the sign to the left belongs to that number. So this 9 is negative, and this 5, if I look to the left, is also negative. This 4 is negative. And if I look to the left, this 3 is negative. So on the top, that gives me negative 14. And on the bottom, a negative 4 and a negative 3 gives me negative 7. All slope fractions reduce. This one has two negatives, which makes it a positive. So this slope is 
2. Now, this matches the same slope we got when we used these same two points for rise and run previously. Let's do one more example. If I look at this, I'm going to start off by labeling my points x1 and y1, x2, and y2. And I'm going to write the slope formula down again to make sure I know where the parts go. Let's set up my boxes. And let's plug in. Again, on the top it's y2 and y1, and on the bottom it's x2 and x1. Pay very close attention to your labeling and plug them into the correct spots. So on the top I'm going to get negative 3 and 1. And on the bottom I'm going to get 4 and 4. So my slope equals negative 4, and 4 minus 4 is over 0. And if I have a 0 in the bottom of my fraction, that slope is undefined. Remember, if the 0 is in the top of the fraction, then that slope is going to be 0. That is a quick review and refresher of slope. I hope that that helped. And I hope this lesson is of benefit to you. Good luck. Have a great day.